This week on Not Songs for Work, Terry Tam is co-hosting, Eagle is producing. We break down the madness that is the NBA trade deadline. We also talk about the Super Bowl with our live correspondent in the field. We'll get into the Montreal Canadiens new hire and debut a new segment. We'll get into this and much more on this episode of Not Songs for Work on the Hot Sauce Sports Podcast Network. Terry, how's it going, my dude? I'm very good. I just found out that my nephew, to... t- my nephew took his first steps, so I'm telling my brother, one, you're an idiot for not recording, two, you're an idiot for not, like, FaceTiming me, and just, like, so I can see it. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm responding to a little bit of criticism that I, I introduce you guys twice, then I do it in the cold open and then introduce you guys, so now I just be like, Terry, how's it going, see? Um, I did it it goes fantastic. My, I did something uh, with, similar with my godson where we... We uh, were fishing. Uh, There's myself, his father, and him. And he caught his first fish with my help. And uh, none of us took a picture because other than the child, we were all drinking. Um, (laughs) Eagle, how's how's your afternoon been? I'm good. I actually had a a webinar at work that I had to run and everything. And we tried a new format this time, much more conversational. Uh, Some of the feedback we got from one of our customers was me and the other guy were a real-life Batman and Robin and the only thing I can keep thinking of is I do look good in tights. You're definitely part of, maybe not Batman and Robin, but you're definitely one of two of the ambiguously gay duo, like 100%. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I Remember had a, those guys? I had a shower thought actually the other day in that Peas and me are basically a, another version of Penn and Teller. Oh, it's a good one, actually. It's a good call. Yeah. But do you guys know, yeah, Remember? do you remember the ambiguously gay duo? Of course. Oh, it's the best. What was it Ace, uh, and who, Ace and who? Uh... Oh, what were they called? It was Ace. I forgot the other one's name, but it was like it was pretty funny. They would just like tap each other's dicks. I so like it's I have classic. a thing with those. I have such fond memories of these bits, and then end up looking them up like later on, and then like it's funny for like eight seconds, and I'm like, how did they yeah, used to watch this saying. bit like eighteen Ace times? Ace and Gary. Ace and Gary. Ace and Gary. That's it. My Ace brother. Gary, yeah. My brother and I used to watch the uh, Dean Martin celebrity role. So we had the one VHS for free. The one. Uh, it was the Frank Sinatra one, and yeah. it was we we would be rolling on the floor laughing. Like Don Rickles is hilarious. Some of those jokes still still stand up, but like if we go if I go back and watch it now, it's like okay, it's like it's funny, but like, it's not like comedy's evolved. Comedy yeah, nowadays it has to be quick. You can't like it can't be a yeah. long thought out bit. It has to be quick, like punchlines. Like I watched Louis C.K. the other day, and he's just bang 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 punchline after punchline. You know. Yeah, it's it's um, tight windows. It's kind of it's just what people expect, right? That's what the yeah. taste, that's what the palate has become. Um, but you know, you mentioned you mentioned Rickles, you mentioned uh, the ambiguous thing you do. And speaking of dicks, I want to start with Nelly, <laughs> um, and his his uh, his dick kind of made the rounds on Instagram. And I I think this is never real. Like when it's when it's like leaked accidentally, um, it's never done unless it's on purpose. It seems. I, I can't imagine accidentally opening Instagram when I'm trying to open my camera, and I'm old. So if I if I don't get that wrong, I don't understand how other people get that wrong. Well, Nelly's probably older than us. That's a good point, actually. That's a good point. <laughs> like Nelly's older it's than just us because like, he's cooler. I assume he's younger, right? <laughs> Nelly's for sure older than us. I remember I had uh, the Country Grammar album when I was 15 years old. Mm-hmm. So, got stolen from me in Mexico. That's fair. Yeah, I um. You want to hear that story? It's a great story. Yes. You want <laughs> Go ahead. It? So Absolutely. I went to I went to, I went to Mexico with my mom, uh, my friend, my best friend Peter, his sister, and and their mom. My mom and her mom and their mom were friends, and Peter was like okay. my best friend growing up. So I used to live with them, and uh, so we went there. And there was these two guys from Montreal, these two uh, Moroccan guys. One of them is actually a little bit of a Montreal influencer, socialite, bar owner here in Montreal uh, now. But there's those two guys, they were trying to, like, they were flirting with my friend's sister. So they kind of befriended me, my friend, 
So I they had a P Diddy in the Family album, like the CD, mm-hmm. and he lent it to me. I'm like, okay, can I borrow it? Like I want to listen to it. He's like, yeah, cool, you can borrow it, whatever. I went to the buffet. I left it there. It got stolen, obviously. So then this fucking douchebag. Okay, I'm 15. He's 18. He's this fucking douchebag. He, he's like, hey, uh, I saw you had your Country Grammar album. Hey, can I borrow it? I'm like, yeah. The guy runs off with it. Like, he ran away from me at the airport. <laughs> I'm not even lying. He took. So he lost CD. two CDs. Yeah. In one trip. He lost. Yeah. You lost two CDs. Yeah. He, he stole even. my Country Grammar that. album. Who does that? <laughs> It's I'll tell you guys who it is after. You need to, you need to unfollow him immediately if you follow him. Um, it's it's a problem. It's a problem. You gotta unfollow him the way Kyler Murray unfollowed the Cardinals. You know. I do not follow that guy. That guy is a fucking loser. Not because of that, because of something else that I'll tell you offline. All right. Cool. <laughs> um, yeah. So so I don't know. Maybe I you know just general discomfort with nudity. Um, I don't know. I can't imagine leaking <laughs> leaking that out on the internet. I would have to check eight times it's my camera app before I before I taped it. You know what I mean? So but the thing me. is, the thing is, if you I do a friend. Sorry, go ahead. If you're recording anything sexual, you need to really like focus on the video first because you don't want to like open the wrong conversation. You don't want to open uh, uh, the wrong application. Nothing. You want to make sure. Yeah, you don't know what's happened to your mom. Exactly. The destination says the person it's supposed to get. You know, you need to make sure make sure that happens. Yeah. Now WhatsApp is a I good thing where you can send the video once, which is great. That's true. That's true. I I um I I have one friend who is way too comfortable with nudity. Okay. Everyone on earth has seen his penis. Um, so it's uh not uncommon, but you know, I guess it's some people. That's some 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 uh, some peeps. That's how they do, they they roll. Eagle, yeah. Tell us about the time you sent out your penis all over Instagram. Uh, it wasn't Instagram. Actually, was it any of the social media platforms? No. So, uh, it has been sent out. It is on the internet somewhere. Now, where that is, I don't know anymore. I mean, it's really kind of. Basil has it. I'm sure Basil has it. He has to has it. Have it. Uh, um, maybe Adam Gase has it, and uh, he's gonna blackmail me one day. We don't know. Well, Adam Gase yeah, yeah. definitely has. Like we've said this before, but like the fact that he's even being considered for jobs is he must have like, like ha- a terabyte of dick pics of just everyone on the planet, right? Like he, he just, must have he a to, Jared like, from Subway. Yeah. yeah, he must have a Jared from Subway server room full of dick pics of coaches and owners and executives in the NFL. Must he, it's like guaranteed. We did a lot of serious talk on on the on the Flores uh, lawsuit last week because you know what it was it was a lot of inter- interesting information. Uh, put out a blog on hotsauceports.ca, so check it out if you haven't. But the one thing I thought of Terry is when he very alleges, good piece, by the way. One of your one of your best. Thanks. You, it took me forever to research. It was terrible. I wanted to kill myself by the end of it. You uh, <laughs> your article this week and Matt uh, McKenzie McKenzie Rant's uh, articles this week were two yeah, of the best the articles I've like, seen I've seen in a while on Hot Sauce Sports. Like those those are the two yeah. best ones I think. Uh, Matt's Matt's is really good too. Uh, but when I was looking at that information, I saw. Uh, the allegation where Flores was offered 100k to lose for, for each game he lost, he was offered 100k. And I thought, if that's the case, why don't you just keep Adam Gase? Yeah, he'd do it for free. He would do it for free. 100 percent does it for free. He'd be like, hey, hey, why are we trying to win games? Like, I don't know, like, what do you? Are we in the, are we even in the same league? Yeah. yeah, are we in the same league uh, right now? Because do, the league I know lets me lose all the time. We do have a dense show. We have someone who's. On the ground in LA, he's gonna break down uh, everything that's happening at Super Bowl week. He's part of he's part of Radio Row. Can't wait to talk to our correspondent in the field. So let's get to it. It's time for the news. Ah, Terry, it's the news. But is um, it? I, I don't want to. I don't want to bury the lead. I don't want to bury the lead. Uh, we have uh, Alex the intern. We we've, we've sent him out. Uh, he's in LA. He's on the ground. Uh, he's out there communicating with the you know, players and and sponsors, all sorts of stuff. I can't wait to hear all the great information he has. Finally, the investment in Alex the intern pays off. Uh, let's call him in Los Angeles to get some information going on pre-Super Bowl. Do we got it, Miguel? It's coming in. 
Oh, you're ringing. Okay. Very excited. Very excited. That's weird. Okay, let me uh, let me let me try and check in with them and uh, call them later. Then uh, you have yeah, you have like, one job. You have one job, Alex, the intern. And I don't care. It's if not like he doesn't it. know when we record the show, right? Like he's part of the yeah. company, right? Like what the fuck? And we tweeted at him too, twice. All right. Well, <laughs> Eagle, try yeah. again, and please. We'll we'll uh, I guess we'll cover some uh, trade deadline stuff in the meantime, uh, and then we'll get to the NFL, the big trade, Terry. This is this is one. I was pretty sure it was going to happen for weeks. Um, and I, we, talk, we talked about it as late as last week on the podcast, I believe. Uh, finally, Ben Simmons gets moved from the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, they get James Harden and Paul Millsap. But uh, they also do have, to pa- they do have to send Seth Curry, Andre Drummond, and two first-round picks uh, to the Nets to get the deal done. That's it's, it's probably it's the a, biggest trade and trade deadline history that I can remember. It's um, it's the biggest trade I've ever seen in, in basketball. It's the biggest trade I've ever seen in basketball. I mean, the reason why is because I mean, maybe LeBron another was traded to Miami. <laughs> technically, was he traded? He chose to go to Miami. He, was he wasn't no, through the he, whole decision, yes, the he, whole episode of the, the decision. It was it was a sign and trade, though. I get it, but it's like. Yeah. It, but is he, know, was he uh, just because he was the biggest star doesn't mean it was the biggest trade. The reason why I'm saying this is the biggest trade yeah. is because we're seeing Seth Curry, who's a star, you know, um, yeah, by association. Good, yeah. Yeah. Right. His very father and his outside. brother are legends. Uh, then you have um, Ben Simmons, who, you know, polarizing and we've spoken about him for the last year. He, we knew he was going to get traded Two first round picks, which is great for one player. Your brother on Monday show thought that it was that would have been the other way around. He thought that Sixers should be I'm sorry, the Nets should be paying more for Ben Simmons than the Sixers for Harden. I, it's crazy. I love my brother, but his understanding of the uh, of, of basketball and not not the game. Like he actually watches the game a lot and he gets the game a lot. But sometimes understanding like how these moves work is uh, not his strength. The thing is Ben Simmons isn't paying. All of the leverage is in Brooklyn's hands. Um so basically uh, they had to overpay. I think it's. I think it's a lot. I thought Seth. I didn't think Seth Curry was going to go. I thought it was going to be uh, no picks. I thought it was just going to be Maxi uh, Simmons and and a piece, and then that piece would have been Drummond, and that's fine. Drummond, yeah. by the way, went from being this freak athlete that nobody could see, that nobody could imagine a guy that big who can handle the ball that well, to being like just an. He he was he was there for a while when like the big man like the new style of big man had resurfaced so like I know Pease is frozen now so I'm just gonna filibuster but <laughs> the, the, Andre Drummond was good when the big man came back like when we had like like legit guys like Chandler Drummond was like we, we were looking at him he was the best big man in the league you know uh, there was yeah. a lot of guys at that time and there was remember <laughs> him and Blake Griffin were supposed to like revitalize yes. uh, Detroit. Yeah, it's and true. That did not work at all. I mean, listen, the game all. changed completely for because of Steph Curry and because of other guys. But the game changed yeah. completely, and those guys don't have really have a role anymore. Andre Drummond was just thrown in there because they just don't want to pay him anymore, you know. And they're like, take Drummond, bury his contract, and I think that's pretty much it. So, I think I think Brooklyn wins the trade hands down. Um, yeah, I agree. and. Simmons gives them what they don't have, which is defense and somebody who can distribute the ball, who's very happy to be like a number two or number three in this case. Uh, yeah. They have a guy who's not out of shape the way Harden has been and this part of his career. Um, and it looks like the vaccination laws are underway to changing. Um, and so we might see Simmons, uh, Harden, and, and uh, Durant playing all at one time. Durant is also a little banged up. But adding Seth Curry adds that 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 uh, presence, and Andre Drummond is a guy who eats up some minutes and can take some fouls and um, can be a presence and get some rebounds for you. So I I think he's got value too. I, I just I like the trade overall. I think I think Harden's a better fit uh, because Harden only works in Brooklyn when Kyrie is hurt. Yeah, 
like they kind of do the same things. And so I, I think it works better in Philadelphia. But the idea that, that Harden works better um, when Kyrie is hurt had me thinking, Terry, do you know how many games Harden, Durant, and Kyrie played together? I'm going to say this year? Total. 74. 16. What? 16 total games. 16 total games. I was counting playoffs. I was counting playoffs too. 16. What? How when many have Kyrie playoff, and KD played? Um, More. Not as many as you think. <laughs> I mean, yeah, averages there's, tell you more. There's injuries. there's injuries. You know, Durant's been banged up since he came back from his surgery. Uh, Kyrie's missed some time. He also took a vacation in the middle of last season. Yeah. Um, Harden got hurt in the playoffs. And uh, now that with the only playing home games and sitting out for the beginning of the season, Kyrie was also out for that. Um, it's uh, I think I think this works out for both teams. I think it makes both locker rooms more functional as well, um, because nobody wants a situation where Simmons isn't showing up. It's a nope. it's not a great situation for anybody. And like the thing is, you need to win now with Embiid because he's playing at MVP level, but they're. They're barely like it looks like they're in line for the play the play in game. You know what I mean? So like, yeah. If you don't maximize what you have with Embiid now, you're not going to be able to keep him. So it looks like Philadelphia just saying, "Hey, look, you know, Daryl Morey is the GM. We've seen it before, Terry. His philosophy has always been, I'll get the star, and then I'll worry about the other pieces later. And th- and that's what he did here. And and Harden opted in as well. There has to be like some like some investigation that's happening here. Oh, they've been talking about it for months. I know, but like it. There has to be, you know, I mean, if if the league looks at this and be like, yeah, that's okay. I mean, (laughs) but, but to their defense, like if both teams don't care, then what's the problem, right? Well, other teams will complain is is how tampering usually surfaces, but the, um, what's interesting about this is is always to protect the team that the player belongs to, that he doesn't want to be to, he doesn't want to be there. he, He doesn't want to be in anymore. Right. So if the team that let's say in this example, if the Nets don't give a shit in this example, but that never yeah. happens in the NBA. In the NBA I mean, that's the thing. No so if it's the same thing with, like, we'll talk about the Sabonis trade, but the Sabonis, like, the Pacers and the Kings made a big trade. And, by the way, uh, announced, I'm I'm really on the line. I, I think I might jump off the Pacers uh, bandwagon. And I'll just be a basketball fan. <laughs> well, that's what, hey, you'd be in my territory, Terry. That's how I, that's how I love the game. I can't, I can't, I can't be on a Pacers bandwagon anymore when they literally, like, I was a Reggie fan. I was a Danny Granger fan. I was an Oladipo fan. I was a Paul George fan. I was a Doma fan. Now they're all gone. So what well, do I so do? We'll get it. We'll get into that. We'll get to that when we get to. I actually don't think it's a bad trade for the Pacers. But we'll I didn't even that. know Karis the uh, got traded to Cleveland. Your brother told me. Yeah, because well, yes, because Rubio got hurt, so they needed uh, something else. Um, but yes, we'll, we'll get into we'll get into all that in a sec. But um, what's interesting about the, the thing that you mentioned with the tampering is what Jarowski said that uh, as late as yesterday, I believe he tweeted that um, there was no discussion happening between the Nets and um, between, 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 the, between the Nets and, and Philadelphia. And Brian Windhorst was the one reporting saying, yeah, they're absolutely talking. This trade is yeah. pretty much going to happen. Piss on and my Brian face Windhorst and tell me it's raining. Is, well, that's the thing. Like Brian, Brian Windhorst is like, pretty reputable he hasn't gotten a lot wrong and he's not a guy who like tramples others Woj was like literally throwing him under the bus which I found shocking but then again he also responds directly to players and agents and so I guess I shouldn't be surprised right it's the same thing as the Adam Schefter thing that we've been talking about over the last few weeks yeah exactly I mean why would you be the NBA operates in a different level when it comes to like trades and signings and stuff they're they're not like they're not like the NHL the NHL is a lot more structured uh, the, the NFL is the same way NBA feel like because it's such a player, a pro player league, that they let the players kind of just like be their own agents and negotiate for themselves and play the field, and and that's how it should be. It's your right. You want to play this sport, right? You want to do it. Like you should be able to go out and see if you can get the most money. But the only thing is that the teams that have invested in these players are kind of fucking stuck here. But don't I won't cry for billionaires. You know what I mean? That's just the way it is. So if a player isn't happy where he is, he should easily be able to go out. With the permission, go out and see if you can get a, if you can get an offer. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Patrick did it here in Montreal, and he's his agent, Alan Walsh, was the one that even built the offer that got Suzuki and the and uh, 
who did we get? Uh, Suzuki and Tatar uh, from from the Knights. So like yeah. they built that offer to get Pacioretty, the Knights did, with with the help of his agent Alan Walsh. So I don't see why this should be a problem. But the teams that are losing a value and the money that the, the team, the player, and they invested, they should be able to say something. Well, I mean, that's crazy. Let, let's also think about the, the fact the team... of the the size of the rosters too, right? Like you look at an NFL team, it's fifty two players plus practice squad. You look at an NHL 52. team, it's a twenty two players uh, plus the guys in junior, right? The farm team or 23. whatever it is. Uh, twenty three. Yeah. Uh, you're looking at. Uh, I mean, what other sports are there? It was crazy <laughs> rosters, right? I mean, baseball is like yeah, their baseball, roster there's is crazy. There's more pitchers than there are people on an NBA team, right? I mean, it's just crazy. So, but the yeah, thing is right. that the thing is that baseball and hockey, what they have is they have two farm systems. Baseball has triple A, double A. I think they have single A also. Hockey has the ECHL, AHL, and then juniors for the guys that aren't old enough to play. And uh, so they have a different system. NBA only has the G League. But that's why they, they literally only have a smaller set of commodities to trade. And so therefore, yeah. each individual value, each one has more value, in which case they get to determine what they want to do with their careers versus other yeah. ones. It's just it's you're me. another stock to be traded in the stock market. Yeah, that's a good call. It's also that the, the, the CBA is quite different. And trading players in the NBA is hard because you need to match the money. The idea of maximum contracts drives everyone else's value up because – you can't play. You can't pay LeBron eighty million. So because he's capped at you know forty two million or whatever it is, you have an extra thirty eight million to pay guys. So that money still ends up getting spent. Um, there's a lot of reasons why, um, but you know, like in the end, I will say this: if the teams are willing to work with with guys, they usually do, and they usually get better packages. What happens sometimes is the team says, I'm unwilling to trade you. And then the player says, well, then I'm going to make a mess. And then the player always wins that. You know what I mean? Because like yeah. the Anthony Davis was a good example where he played through yeah. the entire thing. He, he waited. He worked with the team. And the team got a great deal. They, they got a billion picks from the, from the Lakers. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it, it always works out for everybody. Well, not always, but most of the time. So the system isn't broken. I like, I like that players can just say, you know what? Hey, like remember when um, – what was the name of that safety that played for the Seahawks? Not Chancellor, the other one. Earl Thomas. Earl Thomas. He went when they got eliminated. He knew he was a free agent. He went up to uh, uh, Jason Garrett and he said, "Come get me for the yeah. Cowboys." That to Jerry Jones or Jason Garrett, or Jason or Jerry Jones. He said, "Come get me." Like he wanted to play for the Cowboys, and there's nothing wrong with that. But technically, it's he's not allowed to do that. Yeah. I know it's it's a strange it's a strange uh, ecosystem for sure. Um, the next the next one, of course, the next big move was that the Mavs trade Porzingis and a second round pick to the Wizards for Spencer Dinwiddie and your favorite player in the NBA, Terry Davis Bertrands. <laughs> Nobody has cost you more money than Davis Bertrands. Cowboys, Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys and the Montreal Canadiens have definitely cost me cost me more money than any any single bet ever like any single like right, well then. U- uh, unit ever uh, hands down but bertans closely behind yeah, that he Bertans. fucked me last year yeah i think i think i think i still follow him on twitter he's uh, he, it didn't make sense i just wanted him to get one block one night and he just couldn't do it one block i kept i kept betting with you in solidarity i kept betting yeah, with you in solidarity you. and Appreciate we it. kept losing yeah we kept, I, like that's what friends do. You lose with yeah. your friends. You know what I mean? If you, you lose, lose, we lose. We lose as a fucking unit, and we lose yeah. as a team, and we go exactly. down. Can't exactly. say that. Can't say so much about fucking Alex the intern. That's for sure. Alex the intern will be like, uh, I'll, 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 and for, and yes, he's still Alex the intern. Uh, he'll, be, I'll be like, oh yeah, you know what? There's a good line on the Cowboys today. They're at plus one hundred, but you know, like they they score an offense here and there. He legit would pick the Commanders over the Cowboys just to say something different, just to disagree. Agree to disagree. Uh, disagree to agree. Yeah. yeah, that's what he is. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But speaking of which, actually, uh, Eagle, you want to see if you can get him on the line? Yeah, let me try again here. Let's Hold try on. him again. Yeah. Again, guys, we have a live first time ever. Hot Top Sports has a live Super Bowl correspondent in LA. It's a short trip for him, but we were ha- happy to foot the bill. And uh, let's hear. Let's hear what he's got to say. What the fuck is wrong with this guy? He's not man? answering my tweets either. Um, this is very strange. What's going on? Should we try do a status check? I mean, yeah, I'll check on. I'll check him in again. Uh, and honestly, let's check his Fitbit. See if his uh, Steve's heart still pulse uh, is still going. Check, check, check his uh, his whoop band. Call. 
if he doesn't answer the next call, I'm going to, he better have his face in the milk carton. Like that's the only reason at this point to not be, be uh, answering or, our calls. Cause or, we sent or punishment. you there. Or punishment is, punishment is that if he doesn't answer again, he has to change his name back to Alex the intern on Twitter. <laughs> so I'm let's, gonna tweet look the, I'm gonna tweet that. let's look at the, the Sacramento Kings mess. Um, they trade Buddy Heald, which we expected, and Tristan Thompson, but also 21-year-old Tyrese Halliburton on a rookie contract. Um, for DeMontis Sabonis, who is the best player right now in that grouping, you know, not considering so. uh, not, not considering Halliburton's age, uh, with Jeremy Lamb and a protected uh, second-round pick. And I thought to myself, Terry, do the Kings think they're contending? Why? Why are they trading the prospect for a guy who's really good now um, to seemingly surround Fox with a good piece when, like, the Kings aren't going to win anything? They're not we, a contender. Didn't I we, don't didn't, understand. I think when your brother replaced you one time, we were talking about the Kings and how they're like kind of like the, the team that nobody remembers. But, like, now they're not a competing team, but they're a lot better. They are. They are better. Who won, they who are won better that trade? Because... I had a back and forth with some guy on Twitter, Jeremy Partlow, big basketball guy, and he's uh, he was saying how the Kings uh, lost that trade. Yeah, I, th- I think the Pacers win that trade. Yeah. No, no, sorry. I think get... the Kings win that trade. No, no, no. Because you get Halliburton, who's 21 years old. So it's a, oh, it's... if, he, if yeah. he doesn't fully develop, that's a great piece to move. Buddy Heald is a great spot of shooter. Like, it sets them up for, like, their next moves. Because, like, the Pacers basically gave up on this build, right? Like, it didn't yeah. work. They're giving up. Um, I don't know how Harris, they give up like, on Harris, Doma. Like you mentioned, it's already gone. So, so for flexibility, it, it allows them to basically restart the rebuild immediately. And it gives them a lot. Like, Buddy Heald is a valuable piece that the Lakers should have traded for last year. Yeah, that's a good They would have been in a mean, much better spot. Listen, um, Halliburton, com- at 21 years old, playing the way he's playing, is absolutely insane. And even if he doesn't turn out to be a star, you can trade – him as like a guy who might be a star. You know what I mean? I, I, I Halliburton, I, Halliburton's the only reason why I haven't jumped completely off the Pacers bandwagon because I'm like, this guy's good and he's young. Like, I'm, I don't know too much about basketball, but I know names. And then when I start, like, I, if I, I've heard of Halliburton, like, I've seen him play, the guy's unreal. If he's 21 and he's, and sorry, if he's able to develop for the next couple of years at that, at that age, being a prem, being a, a premier player on the Pacers, then I'll stick around. But if this team starts like, really going down and i don't see any sign of 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 improvement or star or whatever i might slowly back away i just might be a, just i'll just stick to it and be a reggie miller fan the rest of my life that's pretty much it yeah Why not? that's how that's how my knicks fandom turned into nba fandom as well terry oh you were a knicks um, guy too yeah okay i might well, jump well, ship to like the knicks were... no don't do that i can't i, I can't recommend that i like their colors yeah, no, but that, that's why I like them is the colors are awesome. Yeah. Um, but um, and when I went to breaking. when I went to MSG to watch them against the Pacers, actually, I wanted to buy all the Knicks gear. It's so nice, like they're just their like, nice. they're just like their regular everyday T-shirts and stuff. They're, it's just so nice. Yeah. No, no, it's it's a it's a classic look, classic look. No, I can. Um, I, I'm free aging. The the the, uh, the Kings also move on from Marcus Bagley, who is probably the worst ever. Uh, it's it's on par with not drafting Michael Jordan in a sense. They they passed on um, on Luka Doncic to draft Martin Bagley, who at, even at the time no one thought was he was a good he's a good player, but he's not yeah. like a star. Where Luka yeah. Doncic was already playing professional basketball in Europe and at dominating. Seventeen years old. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Luka, um, Luka, Luka is like even Alex mentioned he's like you got to jump on the Mavs. I don't like Dallas would be a good team for me to jump on too. I'm a yeah. Cowboys fan, you know. Me and me and uh, me and Sa- Sad Majid can be. I uh, know oh, Ahmed Majid can be. Uh, you know, buddies. We're both Cowboys fans now. Maybe I'll jump on the Mavs with him. I mean, hey, why not? Yeah. That's, that's one way to do it. That's one way to do it. But so, like, that's the thing is like, so this is your your, your second overall pick, right? And you're giving, you're, you're sort of giving the image that you're ready to compete now, because again, you got rid of your youngest assets. And you kept Fox, who you've already signed to a big contract. And, and Fox is the reason you didn't draft, draft Luca because they played the same position, which is nonsense. And 
I don't know. It just it just seems strange. And somehow in all this mess, the Bucks end up with Serge Ibaka because Brook Lopez is hurt. <laughs> because Serge Ibaka is team with like eighteen players. Who's the guy in the NBA that's just like been just on every team uh, other than uh, what's his name, Jeremy? Oh, George Lin. Hill. Oh, George, George Hill. Yeah, Hill, every, yeah. When there's a trade deadline that doesn't involve George Hill, like today, it feels like it's a dream. Yeah, like Pacers, Spurs. I think he was on the Blazers at one point. Um, who else did he play for? He was like he's he's Everybody. been in there. I think he's had two stints at the Pacers. He's the Ryan Fitzpatrick about. of the NBA. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. No, because absolutely. Ryan Fitzpatrick signs places. This guy gets traded to teams. Like, I, what, like what is it? Is he ha- Does he have su- such a high value? Like, is he that respected? And like, I like George. I thought he was thought he was great. He was a good playoff guy. Like, you know, this type of guy. It's what like. his contract is worth is like. It helps fit with other pieces because he's not yeah. like a super expensive piece. So like it helps you fit with other things. So you get like you trade like, you know, George Hill and the Kent Bazemore, for example, <laughs> and you know, see what that gets you that's worth twenty million dollars. Eagle, uh, how much does Davis Bertans make this year? Tell me how much he makes so I can kill myself. Let me go check. I don't remember. You can look that up. I'm actually curious. If uh, it's anywhere north of the amount of money I lost on Hot Streak just by betting on Bertans, it's he's overpaid. I mean, it's it's going to be close to seven or eight million, I imagine. Uh, looking, yeah, no. looking, looking. It's too much money in the he NBA. He makes sixty million. Fuck you, man! How many years? How many years? Uh, five. I'm checking out right now. Actually, hold on. It's... Yeah, I think I think it's five for twelve. I'm actually weirdly remembering that. Oh my god, David! Yeah, Bertha. he signed. He signed I'm, in I'm until 2025. Yeah, sixty so, million a yep. year? No, no, total twelve a year. Okay. Wait, no, wait. sixteen million a year. That doesn't make any sense. What you just? No, not sixteen. Sixteen million. Sixteen, sixteen, one six, one six. Oh, sixteen. Technically, he makes twenty uh, seventeen in 16. 2023, 20, 20, 24. So yeah, a little bit more than that. Yeah, I, I forgot. I forgot before we, Eagle mentioned that that he he upped his contract. Um, yeah. Are you, are, I, can you be bought out in the NBA of your contract? You can actually. That's a, that's a great segue because Goran Dragic got traded from Toronto to the Spurs. I believe this is just a fancy uh, Popovich doing a favor to Pat Riley, and he's going to get bought out. And Goran Dragic, Goran Dragic, which is going to go back to Miami to play like ten minutes off the bench in the playoffs because they need what, a backup point guard, which so. is what he needs. Yeah, which is what he is. Yeah. Now. Okay. I mean, yeah. it's uh, it's interesting. Basketball is interesting. I like this. Over, I was like, that's just too old guys you know like cutting a deal between each other you know i like i like how there's a, a lot of different teams in in finals in sports lately you know what i mean it's not the same shit other than the chiefs it's really not the same shit over and over again like in basketball yeah, last year well but you know? you know the chiefs the chiefs didn't make it we got we got that's the rams what I'm saying, yeah. we got the we got the rams we got the the bengal's obviously the bengal's being the big story but like and I'm 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 writing an article about this. I'm I'm hoping to get it out tomorrow, Terry. Um, Do it. I'm kind of on the Rams bandwagon. To me, the story is you know can Stafford get a Super Bowl? And I've always been a Stafford fan. I'm I'm a Georgia fan. Um, I like I like a team going all in. I like them saying you know what, let's forget about these taking years and years to rebuild and and trying to like figure things out. No no no. Give me the best players. We'll sort it all out. And yeah. and I love that they got rewarded for that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's I'm, like the the trade deadline this year was it was it was really eventful, and I'm happy that like it was it was good to follow. Like I know you follow it a lot more deep than I, when I'm looking going through it, just going through Twitter, and I see all these trades happening. It makes me feel good because I, I I'm a guy who likes to trade. Like I like trades, but I'm also a guy who hoards players for no reason. So when I see trades happening that people are just dumping people, I'm like I I appreciate that because that's something I'm not able to do. I can't get rid of my guys. But I like trades. Trades yeah. are fun. Trades are fun because it's the only thing you do when you play PlayStation, right? When, when I make a team in NHL, the first thing I'm doing is trading guys. It's like, how many times did you trade Robbie Shrimp? We told him this. Oh, yeah. He, yeah. he returned so much value nonstop. <laughs> he was with so many picks in all the NHL games. I rebuilt my farm system. I be, rebuilt my, my team. It was great. It was great. Yep. Loved it. Um, But, yeah, so we have the big game coming. The... Uh, we're not allowed to say what it is, but the big game is big this game. weekend. And even I was on, um, um, I was looking at at the the odds and stuff, and one of my sites on my one of my my sporting books, it it said it called it the big game, and I was like, this is fucking ridiculous, man. Like, why? Yeah, it's only some uh, networks are allowed to call it uh, the Super Bowl, which is 
uh, the strangest thing. Capitalism is its finest, right? There. <laughs> and it's weird. It, again, this is what happens when you when you let lawyers and accountants rule the world. Uh, everything becomes overly petty, and that's that's what we. Got. Do we want to try um, Alex? Check in again. Yeah, let's try now. Let's I tweeted at him one last time, and then I'm done with him. Yeah. And then we yeah. probably fire him after this. But like, I don't understand. What could he possibly be doing? Not his job. This fucking guy. All right. We'll have to think of some type of punishment. I don't know. He's going to have to repay us the tickets or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's for sure. That's what I, I mean. If we're, if we're footing the bill on this guy. Um. So there's a couple things that happen in the NFL before we get to the Super Bowl. Alvin Kamara beats the living hell out of a dude. Um, we, we don't know, of course, all the details. We just know what happened from the police report. Um, I don't know, man. I It just sucks to see it happen. Alvin Kamara is a guy who has had no issues since he got into the NFL. Who knows what provoked this? Who knows what how it got there? I just don't understand how you can beat on a dude till he looks the way he looked in that picture. I think that's the part that bothers me the most, right? It's not necessarily that there was some altercation. We've talked already about if you're a high-paid celebrity athlete, etc., usually you have your body group, uh, bodyguard crew around you to deal with that type of stuff. But fine, he's a big guy. He wants to defend himself. Something happens. Who knows what the situation is, right? But then the level, the fight, level fight, of a beating he gave this guy is just... It's too much, you know? Like, I think I described in our group chat, and like, there's giving someone, like, a, a, a whoop-ass, and there's, like, Malcolm X, uh, Malcolm X curb-stomping someone to death type of stuff, right? And this is definitely... I'd love so to you, know, you I'd love to know what mistake. he actually did. You made the same mistake in the chat, Eagle? It's uh, American, American History, History X. American History X, I'm sorry. I mixed them up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Malcolm X did not No, no, he did not. He did not. American History X. I'm American sorry. History X. That, that scene traumatized me for years. Yeah. It traumatized everybody. Anybody who's a human person... It was different after the after seeing but that scene. I'm gonna tell you why it traumatized me. The feeling of the guy's teeth on the dry, on the the concrete. That's what like gets me going. There's a like the you know ah uh, the grainy the worst. Yeah. It, it it gives me like yeah, fucking yeah. goosebumps, man. That and uh, when somebody I get I get like I'm not claustrophobic, but if I see somebody in a tight space, I get really anxious. If I like when I watch yeah. that movie uh, Buried with Ryan Reynolds. Where ninety percent okay. of the movie he's in the coffin buried in sand, like I, like yeah, the yeah. whole movie I was sitting up on my bed watching it, like I couldn't I couldn't not I couldn't relax like it was just getting to me. I was watching like a home improvement show. The guy crawled under the crawl space. The guy was bigger than me. I'm like, there's no way he's getting out. I was panicking. I was like, get, get him out of there, get him. And he's like, <laughs> Fuck shit. I'm like, I can't do it. I can't do it. Like my hands start sweating. You know, like when you see like when you see somebody hanging from like a building, like my hands were dripping sweat. I was nervous, like really nervous. Yeah, yeah. I can't yeah. do it. No, it's. Uh... It's it's strange how those things can have an impact. Where like you're just watching it, right? You're not there, but like again, you know, fears and stuff is not rational. The yeah. Duke the Graphite is afraid of drains, famously, which it, is weird because because he can't of it fit into a drain because of it. I'm I right the movie. I don't actually know. I I just as long as I've known him, which is my entire life, uh, be. he's been afraid of drains. Actually, his his entire life, uh, he's been afraid of drains. Has to um, has to be it because when I was a kid, I watched that movie and that movie scared the fucking shit out of me and drains. Like really got to me. Not anymore. It's though. it's cr- it's crazy that how in the late in the early in the early part of the century that became a comedic meme where it terrified us as children. It's crazy. So all that to say, and that movie got a fucking uh, beating, eh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, guy, yeah. I mean, listen, what did he do? With the, like, what, like Zinedine Zidane headbutted uh, Matarazzi because he said something about his sister. Like, that's that's mer- that's it's warranted. Mm-hmm. No. If anything, Matarazzi should have got a red card. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I, I like the thing is the police report is not clear. It doesn't sort of specify what the altercation was about or any of that. So, um, <clears throat> definitely hard to tell. Uh, also, the part that's um, more interesting to the story to me is that that happened before the Pro Bowl actually was played. Right. So not only did so he, he then went on to play the Pro Bowl. He played the Pro Bowl, 
And then Psych- the next psychopath. day, the Monday, he basically uh, showed up at the police station to get arraigned and the whole stuff. So he negotiated a deal with the enforcing police officer saying, yeah, he'll put, turn himself in Monday morning. Apparently, the NFL also knew and nobody wanted to say anything, which granted – Right before the Pro Bowl saying, hey, where's Kamara? Oh, yeah, he just got arrested. It's probably not the best look, so I understand. He's cooperative. He's whatever it is. Lawyers negotiate, et cetera, et cetera. Still just another bad look for the NFL and covering up at something else. So the NFL, the NFL knew about the NFL it? So knew. would you go to work? That's crazy. Would you go to work after beating the living hell out of somebody and pretend like nothing happened? Because that's essentially what Alvin Kamara did. Is he showed up for work after beating the living hell out of somebody? After being told I've got, I've you're going to get arrested, and he said, "Yeah, yeah, just let me finish my shift." I've I've gone I've gone yeah. the, I've gone back to school after like in high school, like beating up, a, like getting into a fight and winning the fight. Yeah, like high doing. school. I'm saying as an adult at a place of work, because again, that's well, that's the going. thing. He would have probably would have lost. Him. He would have probably would have been fine for not showing up to the Pro Bowl. So he probably he had to make a deal. Oh, I know. I mean. But at that point, is that, isn't that the least of your worries? The, the NFL fight? should be like, listen, we won't charge, we won't charge you the fee. Just go to jail and like, you know, do your thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, like we, and we're gonna release it saying that we didn't allow him to play because we, the NFL should right now be proactive in knocking down these cases. Henry Ruggs is the big one, right? Like the yeah. the image of NFL players and most athletes. Is that they don't give a fuck and they're reckless. So that's like the that's the, the, the preconceived notion that athletes, when they have too much money, they fuck around. If you know this, you need to be be proactive and shut it down and give yourself a better image than what you have right now. Especially now what's going on with Brian Flores. The NFL needs something to show the public that hey, we're not assholes. We're good. But they can't do so it because they're assholes. I've never understood how the NFL in some ways acts as like this this moral family event. Then there are fights at games. People get like completely wasted and um, are screaming, you know, obscenities. Uh, Players get arrested and like, they still get to skate on this whole like all American look. And I've always found it to be like deeply flawed, right? Like it's it's the opposite thing of the thing they're saying they are. It's they're they're, they're the biggest hypocrite. Uh, They're they're the biggest hypocrites in sports, NFL. Roger Goodell yeah, is anyway. Absolutely. Roger Goodell is. And we saw it with that, I yeah, mean, but, but, that question that that guy asked and at that at Radio Row, like, what was that? Are we talking about, is that I, on, the, is on the, is the script? Uh, it's not. We can mention it now, though. I don't even know who the reporter is, though. Um, he, I didn't get his name. Chat, get his name. I didn't get his name, but he was, he was a black guy, and he started asking, like, he started giving out facts to Roger Goodell. He's like, we've asked the owners this, and in the, in the, out of the 11 execs at the head office of the NFL, there's only two uh, people of... Um, uh, color, um, so he's basically Jim challenged Trotter. Roger Goodell to. Sorry, Jim Trotter was who did it. Jim Trotter, yeah, he's with challenging, the, challenging the NFL media, the NFL. Yeah, challenging the NFL to be better, and good for him. You know, telling your boss that they need yeah. to be better is good. So he works for NFL media. So there is a theory that because of how uh, quickly Goodell was able to answer to all that. Um, well, it was also a, a non-answer that, too, but I, yes, yeah. <laughs> But it, it looked like a very prepared answer. And, yeah, it's a Roger Goodell um, answer. What do you mean? But there's a theory out there that, that the dude's a plant. Um, but Well, even, even if he's honest, not a plant, I'm sure not, he exactly. gave them a heads up of, I'm going to ask this question, right? Out of whether it's internal respect or something. Like, it's clearly not pure objective journalism. There's definitely some heads up that was given. And whether or not it was orchestrated or at least... You know, I'm going to ask you about this, so have something ready, right? I, it's probably yeah. at least that. Yeah, that's but right. Listen, I mean, we, he has we to be prepared, right? Of, but either way, we got a lot of information from that question. Like, not the answer meant nothing. Exactly. But from that question, we we got a ton of information about what the situation was like. At a place, for example, at um, NFL Media, where there's also no black decision makers. And yeah. we didn't, like, in all our conversations about Brian Flores and my article... That didn't even come up, right? We didn't yeah. know that information before that question was asked. Well, that's not, it's not, it's not something that's like public. It's not like everyday knowledge. It's not like a, it's not a, a household uh, topic. Like not everybody's looking at, oh, look at NFL media uh, representation, see where they're, how, how they're represented. So like the NFL needs to do something different. I think that the steps yeah. are like, obviously they're right now, I think this year, 2022 is when the, it's actually going to change. I really believe that. I really think that there's going to be an improvement. Now, 
if we look at the amount of people that they're interviewing and all that stuff, and that's 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 outside. I, what I'm talking about, the mentality of the people involved, is changing this year. I I, I really believe that. It, it might not yeah, be this year, people. but in 2023, 2024, but this is the year. 2022 is the year. Year of the Tiger, my year, uh, is is the year that I think that we're going to see things change and and for for the better. I mean, look. In the end, even if Brian Flores' suit is not successful, that was the point of it, right? So in the end, hopefully Brian Flores will be remembered um, as somebody who actually took the NFL a task. But like we have the Rooney rule, hopefully we'll have, you know, um, the Flores rule or the Flores, yeah. you know, whatever. Like something to honor him because, look, has to be an regardless alliteration. of what you think of him as a coach, mm-hmm. yeah, um, the Flores found him. Um, <laughs> But the Flores Foundation, a fund to try a, and bring coach opportunity, that. opportunities to uh, racial minorities. Well, that's pretty good. Mm. That's pretty so good. It's, that's a, pretty it's good. a stretch. Guys, I don't think, I, thank I don't you think so they'll much do for, that. Th- thanks a bunch for uh, filling in while I freeze. I can't control my internet today. I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on. You know, I know cause I you think, it's because your showers are too today. long. You know who else couldn't control Your showers are too long. That definitely should. That's yeah. the intern. Well, no, but he, he all he had to do was answer his phone, which was ringing, by the that way. That and also watching. Um. Yeah. So, <laughs> Super Bowl Sunday. Um. Uh, who's your pick, Terry? Who do you got? Are we talking? Are we talking money? Or are we talking like brain? <laughs> the game. What's gonna happen? In the game. The game. I'm. I'm still torn, and I. I don't know. Like I don't want to. I don't want to discredit the Bengals too much but they've really impressed me every single week they've played in the playoffs so they've really gone against everybody's opinions of how the game is going to go like they've like we thought that the Kansas City Chiefs are going to run through them they had a great game against them uh nice comeback um we it's just I think that the Bengals are playing they're they're playing out of their minds right now and I just don't see Joey Burrow losing so I'm going Bengals I really do think the Bengals are going to win the Super Bowl this year and I hope they do but I also hope um, Matt, Matt Stafford wins because, you know, good guy. Yeah, yeah. like there's no villain, right? That, that's the hard part yeah. of the Super Bowl. Like, and, Ramsey and, like, is probably the only villain, but, like, is he really a villain? Not really. Yeah. Not really. Not, not a real way. <laughs> yeah. the, the, the thing is, I, I hear you when you're saying you're torn, and it's it's not even like Odell Beckham's ACL level torn. This is Natalie and Brulia level torn. This is <laughs> 90s alternative torn. It's, it's, big, it's a big deal. Um I don't know. I I, I, I got to pull for the Rams here. I love the idea of somebody going all in. And you know what? I, I have to believe Burrow will be back in the Super Bowl. Who knows how many times we'll have a chance to see Stafford um, and his super square face holding the trophy. Um, you know, it's a very it's, square it's face. Be, it'd be cool. It'd be cool. Are you it's are you are you, are you going square? for the Rams because of uh, Stafford and the Bulldogs? Kind of. I just always I like Stafford, and I've always been higher on Stafford than most people. Yeah. So what I'm really cheering for is for me to look smart. That's all, because it's all about me, Terry, at all times. I mean, the way you close out the show is just perfect. Is it? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> the way you close it's out so the show is so symbolic of how you only care about yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. My wife, my wife loves that about me. By the way, <laughs> that I only care about myself. Um. Eagle, we have a new segment. When, when yeah, so it? we're going to be calling this Final Take. And so here's my understanding, because, Pease, this is actually your concept of a little mini game we're going to play in the show. So here's my understanding yeah. how it works. Uh, you guys are going to come up with two topics, and one of you gets to pick the topic and the take, and the other person has to take the opposite take, and then I get to vote on which take is the correct one. And that is your new oh. um, position for the rest of the shows. Okay, cool. Let's yeah, exactly. exactly. So what's going to happen is, for example, I'm going to introduce a subject. And I will then give my take. And no matter what, because just like on first take, where they obviously always disagree no matter what. Um, but surely, surely they firmly believe in these things. Um, the other person, so in that case, Terry would have to take the opposite side, regardless of what he thinks. And we're going to go one step further. And for the rest of time, that is going to be our take. We're going to call each other out on it on the show whenever we contradict ourselves. So uh, this should be this should be interesting. I, I got to see where this goes. Uh, Eagle, you'll, you'll be Sky Judge. Who goes first? Uh, let's go with Peace. Since this is your topic, you get to go first. 
All right, Eagle, uh, this is a sports podcast. 45 seconds or less. I'm gonna, yes. Quick. Yeah, sports podcast. I'm going to start in the only place. Uh, I'm the, it's the only place that uh, we can. Lord of the Rings is a trash movie. It is a documentary uh, about walking. So I think it is a trash movie. Terry, what are your passionately po- positive thoughts on Lord of the Rings? Um, I actually just watched the first two like last week. I, I, I'm, okay. I just haven't seen the third one yet. So like, uh, I'm a, But you've I'm a never fan. watched them? No, I just saw the first one years ago, but I don't remember any of it. Like when I was rewatching it, I didn't remember any of it. So like I rewatched it. I, you I watched the them. Walking? Sorry? You didn't remember all the walking and then the no, walking? No, I don't remember all the, the walk- walking. But the walking is good because of like all the scenery. It makes me want to visit New Zealand. So plus there, right? Um, okay. The war, the like the, the I was I heard about like the fight scenes and the war scenes. Pff, nailed it. All sing every single one of them. The storyline is great too. Uh, a little confusing at times, but still like it keeps you on your toes. Like movies like this, normally I kind of spaced out, but I didn't space out at all during these movies, at all. I thought I had you trapped. I thought nope. I had you caught. I never pegged nope. you for Lord of the Rings guy. I thought I had you trapped. Uh, no, I mean I'm. I'm an, I mean, I, normally I wouldn't be, but this I watched it and I'm I'm in. Like I'm sold out. And the, what's his name? Uh, Dumbledore. What's his name? Gandalf. Gandalf. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> many people are upset right now. Gandalf being like uh, like like a stoner is great. The Shire. How much weed is at the Shire? Like I love that stuff. Nonstop. That's a good point. That's a good point. I'm gonna have to go with Terry on this one. So uh, yeah. This is, right. It's a very obvious one. I'm also a, I'm also a nerd, so of course I would like Lord of the Rings. And your position, yeah, naturally, well, that I'm, was I'm awful pick. So, so I'm good. I'm good being stuck on Lord of the Rings being a trash movie because it's a trash movie. It's a trash series of movies. Books are great though. The, the books are actually great. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, so it's my turn. Yep. Yeah. Wayne Gretzky's overrated. Why well, I think Wayne Gretzky's would you like overrated? To elaborate? Yeah, Wayne Gretzky's overrated because uh, I think he's still a good hockey player. I just think that he's – I can't consider him to be the great one. The reason why – have you ever seen this guy's goals? This guy crosses the blue line, takes a slap shot at a goalie that's trying to save the puck in the middle of the ice like this. Like he's giving all kinds of angles here. And the, the yeah, goalies the, were brutal. The jump man, right? Yeah. The goalies Grant were brutal. Grant Fear was giving his best Jordan impression. Yeah, exactly. So like when I look at it, Gretzky, he's like – he's got some crazy goals. Don't get me wrong. He's one of the best. But you know, I just think that we overrate Wayne Gretzky. No, listen, in, he, properly rated. His stats will never be touched. It is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, he had long flowing mullet, so that gives him extra points right there. Uh, plus, he lost to the Montreal Canadiens, which makes me love him even more. Uh, Wayne Gretzky, the greatest hockey player of all time. The easiest take you ever you ever got me to take. I'm taking, I'm taking Wayne Gretzky being the greatest. It's not even close. See... Normally, Peas, I would agree with you, but Terry actually brought up a lot of good points, and I can completely understand his argument. So I think I'm going to go with Terry on this one, oh, too. Oh, I left on Hot Daughter. Oh, the Hot Daughter. That baby. would have, that would have saved you baby. right there, yeah. And uh, my girlfriend, my girlfriend would jump on this uh, Lord of the Rings stuff, too. Not a tough take. Not a tough take. All right, I'm going to put uh, you in a rough spot, Terry. Um, this is, uh, my take is, my take is, the Bengals are going to win, so I'm betting the Bengals. So the money that I'm putting on the game has to go on the Bengals because uh, the they 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 are a team who looks like they've they've adapted. Ryan Tannehill's not on the other side nope. of the field. So uh, like, listen, we we know what we gotta do. We gotta protect. We can't just take nine sacks. We're gonna we're gonna get rid of the ball quickly. We're gonna isolate Jamar Chase. Give me the Bengals to win. I'm taking it. Uh, they're gonna win it by three. Let's do it. So I'm putting Bengals all my th- money on the Bengals. That, my take is I'm betting on the Bengals for the Super Bowl. I mean, I just told you I'm picking the Bengals. Though. You shouldn't have asked me the question. Well, you can't. And listen, listen. It's, it's all right, cool. So, all right, so the, Bengals, so the Bengals right now, as good as they are and as well as they're playing, and as, even though I will be betting on the Bengals because the money no, is No, 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 you will not be. No, if, only because, of, only because, only because of the value. you this, you got to put your money on the Rams. <laughs> only because of the value, but the fact that people th- actually think that they're going to win is crazy. Aaron Donald and Von Miller is the answer. The O the O line for the Bengals is brutal. And Joey B, I mean, even though the guy's got like he's made a stone, like I don't think he his heart rate raises at all. He's the guy's been undefeated for years. I just don't see how Matt Stafford's gonna let his receiving core like Cooper Cup, Odell Beckham, Higby, all of them. Yeah. I mean, I'm taking him. I'm so, taking him. I'm taking so the my I'm taking take the is my take is 
I'm putting all my I'm putting all my gambling money on the Bengals. That's a good call. What's your take, Terry? My take is I'm putting all my gambling money on the Rams. <laughs> and do I have to prove? Do I have, do I need receipts? Do I have to prove my bet slips? No. I mean, I guess you, you guys should be holding me accountable. Yeah, right? but he's not here anymore, so now I get to choose. So that's a good point. Yeah. So am I going three and zero, Eags, or what? Uh, yeah. T- um, well, from a betting perspective, if the odds are good, then you'll take the Bengals. But I don't think this will be a close game. I think Rams. Yeah, money's on the Bengals. My heart's on the. Ra- I mean, my, my brain I, is on the Rams. Eagle man, I was trying to set Terry up. I want him to have to to have to bet something he doesn't want to bet, and we'd be betting together because I'm betting Rams. So you know what? You just broke our friendship. You broke our friendship it. by being a shitty sky judge. I love hey, it. It's fine. I'm Let's a sky judge. So I win three. No. Yep, three up. I guess we're both. All right, the last one. Yeah. Clapping when the plane lands is the the lowest form of intelligence in the history of humanity. All right. It's the highest form of intelligence because, listen, it's taken forever for humanity to reach this point in evolution. Look how many dumb animals there are out there. That's a good point. You think you think a shark can clap? Sharks can't clap. They're they're trash. They're they're not they can't even walk. They can't they even swim clapping. backwards. Exactly. Can't swim backwards, can't clap. <laughs> They would be so disrespectful on the plane. They'd yeah. eat all the shit. Um, they'd but I also said plane. humanity. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm, I'm, <laughs> listen, I'm trying to take a take here. <laughs> and what is humanity if not the entire animal kingdom? What is humanity if not That's just referring to sharks? The most intelligent form of humanity <laughs> when humanity is defined as the entire animal kingdom. Yeah, what is humanity if we're not talking about sharks clapping for no fucking reason? I mean, listen, if you're – if you're the idiot that claps when the plane lands for a guy doing his job, then you should be clapping at the guy, at an Uber driver bringing your food. You should be clapping at the doctor who just writes a prescription for you. You should be clapping. You should be clapping at the self checkout machine, clapping for yourself because you just did your job correctly. The pilot did his job. He landed. Why is he getting a standing ovation? And why, after clapping, do they stand up when we're not even ready to leave the fucking plane? Well, because sitting is terrible. It's not good for your circulation. You need no. to get blood going. Plus, again, the captain got you there seriously. What other animals, what other species would get you there, would get you there safe? You yeah. think a chimp can land a plane? Name me you one species that can land a, land a plane? I don't think so. They can barely <laughs> land themselves. Yeah, Crash but we're cigarettes. not talking about the landing of the plane. We're talking about the idiots clapping. I'm pivoting, Terry. That's, that's, that's <laughs> called, I don't have a defense for the idiots who clap on a plane. But I do have a defense for all of humanity. Because listen, when 9-11 happened, didn't we realize we're all human? Sure. That's my final thing. <laughs> my final Eagle. thing is that, is that uh, clappers are the uh, greatest of all humans. Eagle. Humans are, since 9-11, the entire animal kingdom. Eagle, I'm going to write down the score. Is that the score? That is exactly the score. I've <laughs> never cool. seen a clean well, sweep you put me in since... position there. Yeah. I haven't seen a That's sweep this possible. clean since Montreal beat Winnipeg in the last Stanley Cup playoffs. <laughs> All that, right. That's not right. All right. That's a good. Well, that's so awful, that's right? the only thing that sucks is that's the take I'm stuck with. Like from now sure. on, I gotta clap. I gotta clap when I land in planes. Like, no, no, no. You're limit. going against clapping. No. But am I not stuck with my take for the rest of time because I lost? Oh, all right, cool. So we're stuck with your take. Fuck. Now I have to agree I'm with people with clapping. So, no, he has to agree. Listen, with people I'm, clapping. I'm stuck with. My... Oh, okay. For the rest of my life, now I need to clap on it when my plane lands. This is infuriating. It is. I need video proof of this next time you're on a flight. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It'll happen. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I need this. I need you to I'm get up in the middle of the album, even right as the plane's landing, and they're yelling at you to sit down, and you just like, like, just like get yeah, up in there, I, get every, and get everybody. I can't wait going. to meet the marshal. I can't wait to meet the air marshal. This is gonna be terrible. Yeah, I'm gonna be arrested. All right, let's move on to, uh, to rapid, rapid fire, fire here. Uh, there's a few of them, but we're gonna start with going back to the future, Marty. Uh, shortly after dismissing former coach Dominique Duham, uh, the Montreal Canadiens hired a new head coach and former Tampa Bay Lightning star uh, Martin St. Louis. We actually have a clip uh, of him at the press conference uh, introducing his system, lack of system, concepts, awesome. question mark. How we want to be as a team. Um, now, there is structure inside concepts. You know, systems, you can say structure. When systems, you box players in into only certain things they can do. And, and, and I, that was probably one of the things that I hated the most as a player is play in a system 
where I, I was a great player when I was allowed to make reads because the best players make the best reads. But if you take the reads out of the equation, those best players become average. So I want to make sure that I allow my best players to make reads. And I'd rather them make a bad one than making a read at all. And sometimes in systems, there's not much reads. Uh, I, I mean, yeah, that's a good, I, good point. I agree entirely. And I think a lot of players yeah, will like that. Yeah, you can't put a guy like Caulfield, who's an extremely creative player. You can't put him in a in a in a in a in a cage and tell him, okay, just do this. You know, it just doesn't work. You need to, especially in the, the, the and I said this when they were looking for a new coach. I go, they need somebody that's going to be able to motivate the young guys in the new style of hockey. Like the style of hockey player that Joe Thornton is doesn't exist anymore. You know what I mean? Like the big guy that can skate and go through, it's very rare. Like Connor McDavid, he's a tall guy, but he's super skinny. He's not a power forward. Like there's very rare you'll see power forwards really dominate the league anymore. Like Eric Lindros doesn't exist. So when you have guys that are really creative, Chris Kreider is leading the goals, leading the league in goals this year with 33. Chris Kreider is not like a, a prolific goal scorer. If we're looking at like guys like Ovechkin, like the sniper that just sits in the corner and just rip shots, that doesn't exist anymore. So we need guys that are able creative. Marty St. Louis was an undrafted player, I mean, undrafted, if not undrafted, then really low. And he ended up becoming a, making a Hall of Fame career because of his creativity, because he wasn't stuck. He wasn't put in, in, a, in a cage. He wasn't put in a corner, told, do this, do this, do this, and you'll have success. Make mistakes, figure it out. And I think it's the best signing from any of the options that they had. Like Patrick Waugh was being thrown around like that's a fucking dumb signing if they brought Patrick Waugh in. I really agree. I really think that. You can't, you can't bring Patrick Waugh as a coach. Like that's – come on. What are, we, what are we even doing? Here's the thing though. Like he won the press conference because we all loved it, right? He said the right things and it's exciting. But bad organizations don't make the right decisions and don't help people do their best jobs, right? And – can we say the Montreal Canadiens at this point are a good organization? I can't. Last time we won the Cup was a surprise in 1993. Nothing was built off of it. Nothing happened since. There hasn't been consistency in over a decade. What, what are we talking about? Why are we pretending? Like, yes, the 24 Stanley Cups are amazing. We should be the Yankees, but we're not anymore. And, and it's course. really frustrating. So hopefully, hopefully this is a change. But to me, what's it matter other than winning the press conference if you're just going to come to a bad organization that, and won't get the support you need? Yeah, I agree. Last thing on my end, because I am a literal systems and process guy, um, in the context of sports, they will get you regular season wins, but they will not get you cups. So I do like the new stuff. You, yeah, you, st- yeah, you still need, you still need a, um, you still need some grit going into the playoffs, and they're they're lacking that. They're going to get it, but it's not going to be on the top two lines. That's for sure. All right, next. I know you want me. Uh, new Miami Dolphins head coach Mike McDaniel offered a very normal answer to a softball question about his musical taste while being interviewed. Yeah, we do. What? It's just coming. Well, Miami? No? I don't, I, don't I, saw, I don't think I saw this one. What else would you listen to other than Pitbull, maybe some throwback Will Smith? Welcome to Miami. <laughs> okay. You know? Because that's what's popular in Miami. This guy, this, this guy, this guy, is perfect. The reason why is because he know he understands the bit. He knows that these people aren't relevant anymore. He knows, and he knows that he's going to get a few retweets and a few laughs out of this. He's a very smart person. I'm all on the McDaniel's. I love how they call them. Uh, is it like so? My question was, is it? You know what his nickname is already? Bong Shula. What? Bong Shula. <laughs> That's That's well, because he he initially said he initially said he wasn't going to go anywhere where there wasn't legalized marijuana. It's medically legal in Florida, uh, so I, he's a bit of a traitor to the cause. So a bit of a traitor because yeah, he should have gone some place where it was fully legal. But whatever, <laughs> you know what? I'm sure he's got his he's got his card, so it's all good. Um, I, I just my question was immediately: Is he in on the joke or is it pandering? So you, you're pretty sure he's in on the joke, huh? Hundred percent, he's in on the joke. Hundred percent. There's no way he's I not. Just, I think he's just maybe one of these football weirdos who just th- knows n- nothing but football. Like I don't he think he's a weirdo. I think he's very. I think he's got his ear to the fucking grind. I think he knows what's going on. I really do. I'm a fan. Uh, t- I mean, listen. He, he did say Mr. Worldwide, so you know what? I can't. I can't hate on that. I can't hate yeah, on that. Mr. Worldwide. All right. Next, it takes an Olympic village. Despite being a prestige rights property for NBC for decades, uh, this Olympics is expected to yield its lowest ratings in American TV history ever. Is anyone surprised? China, bro. Oh, when, when every, anything anything the Chinese do, the American other than 
everything the Americans don't like. <laughs> they want their product. They don't want. They don't want to watch them. But the problem isn't the, the TV that was made in China that they bought, and, and yeah. or the phones that were made in China, or the computers that are broadcasting us, Terry, um, and the microphones we're using, and the clothes we're wearing. Um, it's complicated. There's obviously atrocities happening in China, right? Um, but we've made it so that our lives are impossible without that. So I don't even have an answer. Um, I will say, for me, the Olympics aren't something I watch because I don't watch skiing on a regular basis. I'm oh, not going to pretend to care about skiing. I said I tweeted you know? and I said that I wasn't going to watch anything and I ended up watching some figure skating, some snowboarding, and I don't give a fuck about the Olympics, man. I do not give a shit. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, same. I've even the hockey, even the hockey games. I don't give a fuck. I'll watch it because it's something I recognize. Like my wife, the snowboarding, so she watched a bit the snowboarding. It's impressive. Don't get me yeah. wrong. What these people do is They're wild. You're super athletes. The best, I'm just best not athletes. interested. Yeah, I'm just not I interested. don't care. Dave, David Darnay is on the team. Like, let's get realistic here. Okay, David Darnay. Yeah. All right, next. Uh, do you like Te- Tevagolia and getting caught in the rain? Here's a tackle by law. Here's a very Jesus. normal conversation between the again Mike McDaniel's and his new quarterback. It's yeah. on the plane. Yeah, I saw this one. There you, I just had to get on with you real quick. Um, we're gonna have an extensive professional relationship, my man. One thing I know about you is you have the ambition to be great. Your job is to coach you to. Do get all that great out of you and it's gonna be fun man it's gonna be work but i know you're not afraid of that so um this is, this is an awesome day for me um and i'm damn sure gonna make sure that when you look back on this day you're gonna be like damn that was one of the best days of my career too okay but i'll earn he's, that from you know you got know. me no since you can't hear him he's there's a camera on us right now since you can't hear him he's he's telling me how excited he is and uh that there's no other coach you'd rather play for in the entire world, which I thought was nice since it, this is the first time I've really talked to him. <laughs> I'm elated, bro. It is, it is an unbelievable opportunity for me that I do not plan on wasting in the slightest. You can, I promise you that. Um, I'm all in. You're going to get the best um, out of me that you could possibly get. There's, there's only one way to do anything great, so, um, and there's no sh- cuts. But let's go do something. That's worth doing. It's on, bro. If you don't have eye like black at home, like you better go get some eye black. Sounds like he sounds like my we're dad. We're going. It'll we'll be outstanding. Dude, I, to I'm happy for you. I'm happy. So like, and I'm talking to him, and I'm like, hey, uh, yeah, how's it going, man? Yeah, you know, uh, I live here. I'm doing this. You know, like, like just very like, oh, okay, okay, cool. Like always trying to end the conversation. Uh, that, that's the same conversation you just had. It's uh, I, I'm starting to turn. I agree with you. I think he's on a bit because. Um, I hadn't heard the full clip. I only heard the first of it. And I thought, yeah. this is... He gets the part where he's like, he's saying there's no other coach he'd rather play for. And we, this is the first time we met. That's a good joke. That's that's quality. That that made me legitimately laugh. Um, I'm with you. The fact that it was entirely coach speak, including to, I'm going to damn sure going to make sure, is my new favorite sentence. I want that on a t-shirt. It means the most nothing of anything I've ever heard in my life. It is excellent. You're right, Terry. He's in on the joke. I, I'm so I'm so Dolphins uh, Super Bowl next year. Let's do it. Yep. All right, and our last one in the Heights. Uh, last weekend, Jordan Spieth 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 attempted a death-defying shot at Pebble Beach, and we get to watch it on video here. I saw the thumbnail. I didn't see the actual clip. And we're loading. Stand by. What do you want from me? I don't know how it's how it's been controlled. I mean, guys, this is a scary shot normally, but this is downright terrifying. Okay, right now. I don't think I could do that. To be honest, I went over and took a stance, and it is, yeah, it's scary. Yeah. Well, he has been battling oh, yeah. an intestinal infection. I hope he's got the stomach for this shot. Well, we haven't. Is he going backwards? <laughs> My goodness! Big wide stance. Stay stable. That's a seventy-five foot drop. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought he was going behind him. I'll be honest. I was watching him more than the ball. Yeah. Because yeah. I've seen oh. Spieth make that shot. You ever see that shot where he hits it? Backwards? You yeah, see no, that shot? The one. Yes, I've seen that one, but this is the, this is a different one. He's at a cliff's edge, seventy-five Die. feet from 
Yeah, like the ball is inches from the edge, and he made the shot, and then like kind of you saw him sort of step back instead of his normal swing. Actually, gets a decent shot off. His his caddy has since said that if that ever would have happened again, he would kick the ball and take the penalty so that Jordan Spieth couldn't take that shot because he said seeing him do that was terrifying. It is pretty scary, but you know what? Good on him. <laughs> golf's the most golf's the most dangerous sport in the world. Proven, proved. <laughs> well, now now clearly it's clearly it's the case. The uh, the PGA, you got to pass a ruling, back Jordan Spieth up like a foot. D- does it really matter? Does it yeah. really matter? To hit like is is death is death the thing? Well, they're they're gonna tell him, well, listen, you don't have to take that shot. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, also, Jordan Speed, take the penalty. Take yeah, the penalty. also, Please. there's that too. All right, before we wrap the show, uh, we're going to do one last like... check-in just to see, because I did tweet him before, yes, I was gonna... uh, yeah, Alex, please. the intern, While we to off. let him know that if he doesn't get back to us before the end of this show, um, we're going to have disciplinary action on this. So uh, let's just hope he has a very good excuse if he doesn't pick up this time. Yeah. At this point, we'll just get his pick. Yeah, I mean, he must know something. He's there. He must have seen, like, OBJ limping or something. I don't know. This fucking Okay, guy. next year, who's okay? Who's going next year? It's in Vegas, who's right? Going? I don't even know where it is. Rumors are in Dallas from now on. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Because you know, they don't want home field advantage. If, so. if, if, if it's Dallas, Terry will go. And if it's Vegas, Terry and I will go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was going to say, send, send no, Duke but... because he loves it. It's as planned in Arizona, actually. Oh, send me. I love Arizona. Oh, I'd, I'd, Yeah, you could take Arizona. I'd move to Arizona. My girlfriend and I were just speaking about what cities you move to. Phoenix is like on the list. I would definitely you know, move Phoenix, to Arizona. People from Phoenix are called Phoenicians? <laughs> <laughs> or Phoenixers. No, don't, don't finish the bit, Eagle. Don't finish the bit. <laughs> context. Uh-oh. Everything is context. So, um, I gotta bet on the Bengals now, huh? People from Phoenix are Phoenicians. Yeah, you have to bet on the Bengals. <laughs> I, really thought, I really thought Eagle was gonna play ball I did. on that one. I fucked you over. I really thought Eagle was gonna play ball on that one. Yeah, not with that at all. Not liking this new game. Um, well, anyway, if, if we win money, uh, Terry, at least listen, at least we're betting together, right? So if I win money, uh, thank you for the hot Bengals tip, which I now believe. They will win the Super Bowl and putting uh, money on it. Uh, Eagle, thank you for everything you've done today, except not picking, uh, yep. not picking on, a, uh, on my behalf. Uh, Alex, the intern, thank you for nothing. You're supposed to be in LA covering the Super Bowl. 4 0, oh, baby. 4 0. Oh. We're keeping yeah. track. Read and I guess. Um, thank you, everyone who has subscribed, who has liked, followed, reviewed. Please uh, do so. It helps us out a lot if you haven't. Um, And other than that, thank you all for letting me be myself.